Hello world. Welcome to another random bit of the garden. I am looking at a bit of garden. You're looking at it with me. That needs a bit of work. I've got some jasmine growing up, some bamboo. The bamboo has grown quite remarkably. I've got a, although I've got a dead bit that needs to come out and some pruning that needs to be done so that I can use the bamboo as stakes for the tomatoes that I've got growing. In the mix, in the mix, you can't quite see it. Well, maybe you can see it off to the right a little bit. Is some Brazilian pepper, which is an invasive species here, and I've also got some maiden hair fern, fern growing up in the midst of this bamboo. It's quite a tangle, and uh, it'll take some time to to clip back and and choose choose which of the jasmine to leave growing through and which not. I've also got some starlings nesting to the left of me, so you'll hear a bit of their delightful noise. There's a canopy of a palm tree. I'm just looking to see if I can see any palm berries to see whether it's Bermudian or not. I don't know. To be decided some future time. But that's giving me a bit of shade so that I can read morning prayer. This is um, for Thursday, the 23rd of April. Today we celebrate the memory of George, who was a martyr martyred on or about this date in the year 304 and of course is the patron saint of of England. He was um, probably a soldier as near as we can guess living in or, in or around Palestine at the beginning of the fourth century martyred in Lydda and he was martyred under one of the persecutions one of the there were a few persecutions under the under various Roman emperors this was the Emperor Diocletian and he became he became famous across the east as the great martyr and so churches were being dedicated to his memory across uh, across the the known world at that time and um including in in england um interestingly enough he wasn't the patron saint of england until um, after the Crusades, King Edward III it was who made St. George a patron of the Order of the Garter, which basically means that at that point St. George became England's patron saint, as it were, in the old ways of doing. Enough about that. Let's pray together. I'm using uh, daily prayer from uh, Sorry, morning prayer from the daily prayer app from the Church of England. You can also go to churchofengland.org and search for daily prayer and you will find this under morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. From 1 Corinthians 5. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. From Romans 6, Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God and Jesus Christ, our Lord. 1 Corinthians 15 Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who sleep for as by man came death by man also came the resurrection of the dead for as in Adam all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen now as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. 
Psalm 5 Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my lamentation. Hearken to the voice of my crying, my King and my God. For to you I make my prayer. In the morning, Lord, you will hear my voice. Early in the morning I make my appeal to you and look up. For you are the God who takes no pleasure in wickedness. No evil can dwell with you. The boastful cannot stand in your sight. You hate all those that work wickedness. You destroy those who speak lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful the Lord will abhor. But as for me, through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. For there is no truth in their mouth. In their heart is destruction. Their throat is an open sepulcher, and they flatter with their tongue. Punish them, O God. Let them fall through their own devices. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them sing out their joy forever. You will shelter them, so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous, and with your favor you will defend them as with a shield. Lord, protect us from the deceit of flattering tongues and lying lips. Give us words of life which speak your truth and bless your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 146, 146. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. As long as I have any being, I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in any human power, for there is no help in them. When their breath goes forth, they return to the earth. On that day all their thoughts perish. Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever who gives justice to those that suffer wrong, and bread to those who hunger. The Lord looses those that are bound. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the stranger in the land. He upholds the orphan and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. Lord of all, our breath and being come from you, yet our earthly end is dust. As you loose the bounds and feed the hungry, so bring us in your mercy through the grave and gate of death to the feast of eternal life where you reign forevermore. Amen. Glory be unto the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I'm switching things up a bit because we're now in Joshua chapter 1. It's very exciting. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon I have given to you as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. For you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate, it, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that's the end of the first scripture reading. 
The second is taken from Ephesians chapter 6. We begin at verse 10 and go all the way to verse 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. And that's the end of the second reading. Once more from 1 Corinthians 15. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Time for us to pray. We'll take a moment of silence to think of all, all the people and items, news items perhaps, that we need to pray for, all the occurrences in our own lives that we need to bring before the Lord. So in peace, let us pray to Jesus, our Lord, who ever lives to make intercession for us. Saying together, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior of the world, be present in all places of suffering and violence and pain and bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, empower by your Spirit all Christian people and the work of your church in every land. Give every one of us grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve this community and those on whom we depend for our daily needs. Grant that we may all seek the peace and welfare of this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great Physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness, and peace to all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Fill us all with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So now let's commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. God of hosts, who so kindled the flame of love in the heart of your servant George that he bore witness to the risen Lord by his life and by his death, give us the same faith and power of love that we who rejoice in his triumphs may come to share with him the fullness of the resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So together, rejoicing in God's new creation, let's pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now may the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let's bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks for joining me, everybody. May you continue to be blessed and be a blessing to others.